Hello friends. I am super excited to be here with you today. I wanted to read two more chapters of Peter Pan for you. I know I'm a couple days late. I'm super sorry. I've been dealing with the cold and I've been trying to work through it. So I'm going <clears throat> to push through our two chapters today. Hopefully I don't lose my voice in the process. <laughs> Chapter three, come away, come away. A twinkling light darted into the nursery. It was a tiny fairy called Tinkerbell. Then the window blew open. Peter Pan dropped to the floor. Tink, he whispered. Do you know where they've put my shadow? In the chest drawers, she said. The fairy's language was like tinkling of golden bells. Peter jumped at the drawers. He dug through the nicely folded things. He tossed them over his shoulder left and right. There was a shadow. He slammed the drawer and shut Tinkerbell inside. Peter was surprised. Why didn't his shadow jump right back on him? He tried to stick it on with a bar of soap, but that didn't work either. Peter flopped to the floor and cried. The sound of his crying woke Wendy. Boy, she said politely, why are you crying? Peter sprang to his feet. Who are you? I am Wendy, Mariah, Angela, darling, she said. I am Peter Pan, said the boy. I was crying because my shadow won't stick but I wasn't really crying. Wendy knew at once what to do. She took out her needle and thread. Then she sewed the shadow back on. Oh, Wendy, crowed Peter. One girl is worth 20 boys. Really, Peter? Wendy was so pleased she offered to give him a kiss. Peter stuck out his hand. He clearly didn't know what a kiss was. Wendy did not want to hurt his feelings, so she gave him her thimble. Now, shall I give you a kiss too? He asked. If you please, said Wendy. Peter dropped an acorn button into her hand. Wendy sighed. I know what I'll do, she said. I'll put your kiss on the chain, then I can wear it around my neck. That seemed to please Peter. How old are you? Wendy asked. Peter frowned. I don't know, he said. He didn't like questions that he didn't know the answer to. I ran away the day I was born. Really? said Wendy. Why? I heard my father and mother talking, said Peter. They were planning what I would be when I became a man. But I don't want to grow up. I want to be a boy and have fun forever. So I ran away to live with the fairies. Oh, Peter, cried Wendy. Tell me about the fairies, would you please? Peter smiled. He knew all about that. Fairies began long ago, he said. When the first baby laughed for the first time, its laugh broke into a thousand pieces. The pieces all went skipping about. Each piece became a fairy. And that is how fairies began. There should be one for every girl and boy, he said. But sometimes a child says, I don't believe in fairies. Each time one does, a fairy dies. An angry shake of bells came from the chest drawers. Why I must have shut Tinkerbell up in the drawer, said Peter. He opened the drawer. The little fairy flew about the nursery. She was tinkling with fury. She's lovely, cried Wendy. Tink, said Peter. Would you like to be Wendy's fairy? Tinkerbell answered with an angry jangle. Peter shook his head. She is not very polite, he told Wendy. She says you are an ugly girl, and she says that she is my fairy, but she knows she can't be my fairy. After all, I am a gentleman, and she is a lady. Tink flew off in a huff. Where do you live now? Wendy asked. With the lost boys, said Peter. Children who fall out of their carriages and are forgotten. I'm their captain. What fun, cried Wendy. Yes, said Peter, but we are very lonely. You see, we have no mothers. That's why I come to your window, to hear your mother tell stories. She was telling such a nice one. It was about a lady with a glass slipper. Oh, Cinderella, said Wendy. She and the prince live happily ever after. Peter leapt to the window. I must tell the other boys how it ended. Peter, Wendy cried, I know lots of stories. Peter stopped on the sill. He had a greedy look in his eyes. He pulled Wendy toward the window. Come away with me and tell the other boys too. Wendy was frightened. Let me go, I can't fly. Come away with me and I'll teach you, said Peter. Wendy. There are real mermaids there. Really? cried Wendy. Peter knew he almost had her. You could tuck us in at night and mend our clothes. You could be our mother. That did it. Wendy ran to wake her brothers. Peter Pan has come. He's going to teach us to fly. John and Michael were up and ready in a second. Peter blew fairy dust on them. Wiggle your shoulders, he said. Soon they were all flying. Nana was barking wildly down the yard. At last she broke loose and ran down the street to number 27. Mr. and Mrs. Darling rushed into the street. They looked up at the nursery window. It was filled with light and they saw four flying shadows on the curtains. The Darlings might have reached the nursery in time, but the stars were watching. 
a young one blew open the window. Hurry, Peter, it cried. Nana and the darlings ran inside and up the stairs. They flung open the door to the nursery, but it was too late. The children were gone. Chapter four, the flight. Second to the right and straight on until the morning. That was the way to Neverland, Peter said, but even the birds with maps couldn't have found it that way. For you see, Peter just said whatever came into his head. Wendy, Michael, and John flew through the air in their night clothes. They followed Peter without question. Sometimes it was dark, sometimes it was light. And now they were flying far out over the sea. How long had they been gone? The children could not tell for sure. Finally, Peter stopped. There it is, he said. <clears throat> the children stood on tiptoe in the air to see. A million golden arrows pointed toward an island. It seemed so familiar, like home after a long vacation. They flew toward the island. Then something seemed to push against them. The golden arrows disappeared. The island grew dark and unfriendly. The pirates have spotted us, Peter said. They'll see Tinkerbell's light, cried Wendy. Tell her to put it out. She can't, said Peter. It only goes out when she falls asleep. But John had brought his tall black hat. Peter hid the fairy in that. Just then, the pirates fired their cannon into the sky. The blast scattered the children across the darkness. Wendy found herself alone with Tink. It is important to understand one thing. Fairies are very small. They have room for only one feeling at a time. Sometimes it is all good, sometimes it is all bad. Tinkerbell was so jealous of Wendy. She was filled with bad, hateful feelings, from the tips of her wings to the tips of her toes. Tinkerbell darted this way and that way. Come with me to safety, she seemed to say. Wendy did not know that Tinkerbell hated her, so she followed the little fairy. All right, friends. So that was the end of chapter four. Next week, we will read chapter five and six and see what else Wendy, John, and Michael do with Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have had an amazing week. I will be here for you next week, sick or not, to finish our story. And until then, have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and we will talk later. Bye, guys.